Hey everyone, I'm Paul, and today I'll show you how to fix those flimsy effect switches on the Rain 1 controller. Wait, flimsy? No, 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 that doesn't sound right. All those people who reviewed the controller who just got it and haven't used it much said those effects paddles are very strong. They're not. Today I'll show you how to fix it for free. Well, almost free. You just need a screwdriver and a hot glue gun. This is what happened. There I was, practicing DJing in my room, when I noticed the right effects paddle got loose and won't stay locked on. The left switch is still good. Moving the switch up locks the effects on, and the down position only works while you're holding it. Here you can see the switch on the right is acting funny. There's definitely something wrong with it. The best surface for working on the controller is your bed. It's soft, so I don't have to worry about damaging anything. Start by removing four screws from each side of the controller using a Phillips head screwdriver. All the side screws are the same length and thread into plastic. It's okay to put them in one pile. These screws have a flat top and countersink into the surface. They have coarse threads for going into plastic. Next, I'm removing all the screws from the bottom of the controller. Don't worry about keeping track of where the screws go. I'll show you in a minute. There are three types of screws here, that's all that matters. Don't unscrew the feet from the controller. I made one big pile of screws. Now let's take a closer look at them. There are 14 pan head screws with machine threads. They go into the gold colored holes in the controller. There are 11 flat countersunk screws with machine threads. They go into the silver colored holes in the controller. There are 10 pan head screws with coarse threads. They go into the black colored holes in the controller. Lift the lower cover straight up and tip it toward the back of the controller. Remove one screw that connects a ground wire to the cover. And that's it! I'm done with the cover. Notice I have four piles of screws. The effect switches are in the middle of the controller under this ribbon cable. Wiggle the two connectors and pull them up. Don't pull them by the wires. The effect switch circuit board is held in by four screws. If you drop a screw, use a magnet to retrieve it. Pull the circuit board straight up. You can unplug the ribbon cable if you want, but the circuit board will slide past it, so you don't have to. The effects paddle sits on top of the switch. Pull it straight up to remove it. The right side is broken, so it's still hanging out down here. The little circle faces the DJ, and the flat line faces the other way. The paddles are actually a really sturdy aluminum, so that's why people will tell you they're strong. The little plastic piece on the inside is called the lens. It connects the paddle to the switch, and it's very fragile. Let's pop that out of there. Release the tabs on each side, then push the plastic out of the paddle. This little bugger is the fragile Achilles heel to this controller. Here you can see the left one isn't broken yet but the middle part is already slightly bent and has stress fractures at the base. It will break very soon. I'm going to replace both of them. I went online to instrumentalparts.com and found the Rain 1 controller. Here are the parts they sell for it. We don't need the paddles, just the paddle lens. And here it is. This stupid piece of plastic is $12.65. I ordered two of them. With shipping, it ended up being about $35. The very next day, I got this email. The parts are on back order from the manufacturer with no ETA. Great. My stupid controller broke because it's too fragile and I can't fix it because Rain doesn't have any parts for it. I'm not ready to throw this $1,600 controller in the trash, so I guess I'm gluing it back together. I just need to super glue this tiny piece of plastic back where it goes. It's so small, I can't even hold it with my fingers. You can see how fragile this design is, because the force goes this way and that way, and they cut it right down the middle. If you wanted to sabotage it, that would be the way to do it right there, man. And the only part that holds it is about 2 millimeters of plastic. That's crazy! Of course it's going to break. I bet 100% of these will break. It's so small, I can't even glue it properly. Here goes nothing. I gently maneuvered the plastic back into place with my needle nose pliers and gave it about 5 minutes for the super glue to dry. I'm pretty sure my super glue job is not enough to hold the plastic together. It needs more than that to fix it. 
I'm filling the lens with hot glue. This will act as a reinforcement. The edges of the cylinder in the middle can't snap off if there's a bunch of glue supporting it. I recommend filling these all the way around with a depth slightly less than the height of the cylinder in the middle. Hot glue is pretty thick, so it didn't seep into the cylinder through the slots. If it does, you can just let it cool, then use a drill bit to get it back out. I filled both lenses with hot glue. I overfilled the second one a bit, and the hot glue is about a millimeter higher than the cylinder in the middle. We'll find out in a minute if that causes a problem. I let the glue cool until it reached room temperature, and now we can find out if the switches still work when they're full of glue. The paddles slide on the switches just fine. When I turn the effect on, it seems okay, but when I go to the lock position, it won't stay locked because the corner of the switch is hitting the hot glue. I used too much hot glue. This switch is supposed to stay. I need to trim a little bit of the hot glue so it doesn't hit the edges of the switch. The Dremel tool works perfectly for this job. You can avoid this step if you fill the lens with a little less hot glue and leave it lower near the edges. Now the switch rocks back and forth just fine and the lock position works. This one is good. The paddle has a round hole and a slot. Line up the lens correctly and snap it into place. I already trimmed the glue on the other lens so I can assemble it too. The circuit board has a circle and a line on it to tell you which way to install the paddles. They feel okay. These switches will be a little wobbly before they're installed in the controller. The circuit board has an arrow pointing to the front of the controller. The front faces the DJ. Slide the circuit board under the ribbon cable and install it into place. The circuit board is held in place by four screws. Before plugging in the circuit board, let's check to make sure the switches feel good. The left paddle feels good. The right side moves okay, but doesn't spring back as fast as it should from the down position. I need to trim the glue more. In the momentary on position, the aluminum paddles will hit this pad. The lock works fine. This one reaches the pad, but it feels like it hits the hot glue first. Let's take a look at the right paddle. I overfilled it with hot glue. See how the glue is a little bit higher than the hole in the middle? I'm going to trim that down and make it look more like the one on the left. That's going to be good. I took these apart and put them back together a couple times until I got the right feeling from the switches. Here we go. Now I can plug in the connectors. Here's a nice close-up look at the controller in case you took more stuff apart and you need to know how it goes back together. Pause the video if you need so you can see where things go. Now I can reattach the ground wire to the lower cover and put it back on the controller. Reinstalling the screws is simple and easy. The panhead machine screws go into the gold colored brass holes. I'm starting with these screws because the holes are the easiest to see. There are 14 of these screws. The countersunk machine screws go into the silver colored holes. They're the second easiest to see. These screws go into steel, and there are 11 of them. Third, the pan head coarse thread screws go into plastic. These holes are all black, and there are 10 of these screws. I recommend threading all the screws most of the way in first, then go back and tighten all of them later. Finally, the countersunk coarse thread screws go into the sides. These screws thread into plastic, and the holes are black. After you install all eight side screws, go back and tighten all of the screws. All right, that's done, and I have a bonus repair for you guys. The knobs on the front of the controller turn too easily. I want to add a little hot glue to these knobs so they don't drift while you're DJing. 
I just want to make a small circle of glue around the potentiometer. Don't get glue into the moving parts, just around the outside edge of the nut. I want the knobs to drag on the glue, making them hard to turn. Let the glue cool, then pop the knobs back on. Now the knobs are dragging on that glue, and that's exactly what I want. You're not going to be adjusting these quickly while you're DJing, and you don't want them to drift because you're expecting the crossfader to be a certain way, and if you barely bump these knobs, the crossfader will behave differently than it used to. You want these knobs to be hard to turn. All right, that's it. I hope this information was helpful for you. Now, the final step, of course, is test every button on the controller, including the ones you didn't work on before you go out and DJ somewhere. Now, if your effect paddles aren't broken yet, it might still be a good idea to add that hot glue to reinforce them before they do break, because looking at this design, I think all of them will break soon. Now, Rain really needs to step up their game. They've really messed up, they made that part fragile, and on top of that, as a double whammy, there are no parts available. They need to redesign that part to make it stronger and make the parts available. Wouldn't that be nice? Thanks for watching.